Shalom. Welcome to the Messianic Hour with Rabbi Scott Sekulow. The Messianic Hour is a program designed to give you insight into the Jewish roots of your faith. Rabbi Scott is also here to answer your questions and help you gain a deeper understanding of Bible prophecy. And now, here's your host, Rabbi Scott Sekulow. Shalom and welcome to another edition of the Messianic Hour. I'm your host, Rabbi Scott. This show is dedicated to reaching the lost and educating the found. And I'm here today with my wife, Judy, as we come together to proclaim the good news as from a Jewish and Gentile perspective. And it's good to have you next to me. Thank you. As And uh, we actually, you're only going to be heard on like the first segment because we have a special guest coming on. And uh, he is the author of of a very special book called The Rabbi Who Found Messiah. And it's really interesting. Last week I got an uh, email from uh, some of his PR people asking to have him come on the show. And uh, then an interesting turn of event took place. They're actually going to send me the book um, and so I could read it in advance. And fortunately, one of our uh, members, actually we had picked it up at a uh, conference that we'd gone to, and one of our members was reading it. Uh, And then something that very interesting happened is the passing of former Prime Minister Ariel Sharon and how that's going to be linked to this book. We're going to be talking about that with the author and how it's going to be pointing to possibly the Messiah. Very interesting. You're going to want to get this book. Uh, You're going to want to hear our special guest as well. And it'll be very unique. Yes, and you know, I was, I'm, I've already started reading the book, and and my wife knows. I, I one thing I don't like to do really is to read. So for me to pick up a book and really get into it, this book is really interesting. Well, clar- whoa, whoa, whoa! Clarify that. You, you don't read fiction books. You don't right. read those type. And I'm not saying this is a fiction book, but I mean, you read your Bible. You read there's commentaries. Right. There's things you I do read. The read. Boring, I read the boring books, the history and stuff right. like that. Right. But you don't. But this is something that's very. You interesting. don't just pick up a book to read for enjoyment. Exactly. That maybe that sounds better. Yes, that sounds a lot better. <laughs> I don't read. I'm a from rabbi. A one-eyed dis- from a one-eyed dyslexic. I'm so. a rabbi, but I don't read. <laughs> no, you read. You just don't read for pleasure right. and pick up books like this. But no it's more. a great book. I'm really getting into it. And, you know, it's neat. Is he, he is buried right outside of Jerusalem. So maybe when we're in Israel, June 9th through the 19th, we might be able to go see Put a stone on where his grave. he is. That would be really interesting. If you want to join us, we are having a great trip to Israel. We still have... Some seats left at the 2013 prices. Not of, many. Of not many, but we do have a couple left of uh, 39.99. That's round trip from Atlanta. Includes all the taxes, uh, all the tips. The only tips it does include are the guide and the driver, because that's really something personal. And your lunches during the day. We don't add little stuff here and there. We don't try to put stuff in small print. Great deal. Come join us. You can go to our website, uh, or easier bet would be to mail. Do go to mail at rabbiscott.com for more information and we'll be glad to get you that info and we're going to have a great show i'm really excited it's really a neat topic i'm glad we're able to get uh carl who's going to be coming and sharing with us on the book the rabbi who found messiah and we're going to be talking about that during this show we look at history you know we had uh, something very sad happened this w- past week in israel with the passing of prime minister sharon but we're going to see how this also is going to tie into possible prophecy uh, and the revealing of the Messiah to the Jewish people. So when we get back, we're going to talk about that. You're listening to the Messianic Hour. Stay tuned. We'll be back right after this break. So let the earth shake. Let the stars fall. Let the mountains tremble. Welcome back to the Messianic Hour. I'm your host, Rabbi Scott. The show is dedicated to reaching the lost and educating the found. I want to encourage you, go to our website, RabbiScott.com. There you can sign up for our newsletter. Uh, you'll get a weekly email that will show you insights of what's going on in Israel, the weekly radio show. You can also ask questions, and you'll get a free gift just for doing that. It's, called, it's a book called I Have a Friend Who's Jewish to You. It looks at the Messiah from a uh, historical, biblical, and then mathematical and then from the scriptural point of view written by a jewish believer it's great to give to your unsaved jewish friends read it first because you're going to be uh get some great information in there and then also we have a prophecy card 
70 key prophecies, where they're found in the Torah, where they're fulfilled in the renewed covenant, and how you can share with your unsaved friends. Free gift just for signing up. And I want to encourage you to go to our website and do that now. But right now, we have a very special guest on our show. His uh, pastor, Carl uh, Gallups, and he wrote the book, uh, the Rabbi Who Found Messiah, and this is about a specific rabbi in Israel, and I want him to, it, the, the gentleman was anywhere between 108 to 116 years old when he passed, but a tremendous history. I was telling you in the break, you know, I'm, I'm not one just to pick up a book and read. Usually the stuff I read is the, the commentaries and the, the old, I call it the boring stuff. This is a great book. It really catches your attention. It really pulls you right into the story. Very well written. Uh, Carl, great to have you on the show today. Rabbi Scott, God bless you. It's an honor to be with you, and thank you for those kind words about the book. My word, thank you. Well, it's great. I mean, I, I started reading it you know, this morning, and I literally could not put it down. And uh, that is that says a lot for me. <laughs> My wife is laughing because she knows how I am with with reading those kind of, you know, just a regular kind of book like that is not something I, I, I normally don't have the time to, but this is one that I'm going to continue to read all the way through because it's really a tremendous, you know, history. A lot of us remember the story of the this rabbi that passed away, but I want you to kind of give us a little insight into it and yeah. tell us what it's about. Well, thank you, Rabbi Scott. It is an incredible story, and it's still unfolding. It, it really still impacts our world and our life, and and uh, many people believe there's something very biblical, very prophetic to this. So let me tell the story in a nutshell, and I know you'll have questions and we'll have things to talk about, but in a nutshell, here's the story. This rabbi, Yitzhak Kaduri, is not some little obscure rabbi tucked away in the bowels of Jerusalem. Uh, this man, when he passed, as you said, was 108 years old. Some had him marked as late as 116 years old. But, you know, 108 years old, 2006, January 2006, when he died, Rabbi Scott, there were 300,000 people that came to his funeral. The, the, the largest funeral in modern Israel's history, the most venerated, the most famous rabbi, millions of followers around the world. They had to close the streets of Jerusalem down for near about two days to accommodate the crowds and the festivities and everything that was happening. I mean, this guy was insanely popular, particularly among the Orthodox Jews in Jerusalem and around Europe. I can remember when his funeral was going on in 2006 that even Fox News carried some snippets of it. Mainstream media around the world carried snippets because they knew of him or knew how uh, incredibly popular he was. Well, but what makes this story so amazing is that prior to his death, primarily I'm focusing on something he said in the fall of 2005. In the fall of 2005, he said two uh, shocking things. Shocking thing number one, he proclaimed that he had had a vision of Messiah, had met the Messiah personally, knew who he was, and knew what his name was, and that he was going to leave the name of the Messiah in a death note, in other words, a note that was to be opened one year after his death. Now, that's incredible. That's interesting, and people have questions as to why he did it that way. We can discuss that, but the bottom line is that was shocking thing number one. And, of course, uh, shocking thing number two on the heels of it uh, impacts us, I mean, just in the last couple of days, it impacts us so heavily. Right. Because he said, way back in 2005, he says, it has also been revealed to me that Messiah, whom I have met, will not appear. He will not come until after the death of Ariel Sharon. Now, Rabbi Scott, that was shocking. Both of those statements were shocking. But what really made this whole thing shocking is that Ariel Sharon, at the time Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri said that, Ariel Sharon was still alive and healthy, as far as anybody knew. He was the 11th Prime Minister of Israel. Yitzhak Kaduri was still alive, 108 years old, but healthy. No, right. no health problems that anyone knew of. But within weeks, within weeks, uh, both of the men were in terrible shape. In December, uh, Ariel Sharon suffered his first stroke. By January the 4th of 2006, Ariel Sharon went into a coma with his next stroke. And by January 28th, the same month, 2006, Yitzhak Kaduri was dead. So, so, I mean, within weeks of him making these two pronouncements, now you've got the rabbi being buried in Jerusalem with 300,000 people at his funeral, an international event. Now the world is waiting for a year for this note to be opened because this man was quite famous for 
uh, setting forth predictions or prophecies or pronouncements. And the Israeli media picked up on practically everything this man said and printed it. Uh, he was heavily involved in Israeli politics and uh, uh, the Israeli Orthodox Jewish life, of course, ag again, revered around the world. So, so they waited for a year. In the meantime, they were grieving, by and large, over Sharon being in this coma, the prime minister, and people thought, well, gosh, he'll, he'll pass away within days or weeks or months. But as a matter of fact, as you know, Rabbi Scott, he lived in a comatose state for eight years and seven days and passed away on the Sabbath, on, the, on a Saturday. Yitzhak Kaduri, by the way, January 28, 2006, was also a Sabbath when he passed away. Right. So he's got all these amazing connections and prophecies. And, of course, just a couple of days ago, Ariel Sharon passed away. And now prophecy buffs all over the world are really paying attention to this prophecy because a year after the rabbi died, January, February, March, right in there of 2007, here's where the story really takes a shocking turn. This rabbi, the note was opened. Israel Today ran a front cover piece on it, and Israel Today is right out of Jerusalem, printed in several different languages. Uh, News First Class, which is a Hebrew language only, right out of Israel, right out of Jerusalem. Both of these major Israeli news media sources reported that on Kaduri's own website, kaduri.net, the note had been posted. And it had finally, after some weeks, somebody decoded the note because he left it in kind of a Kabbalistic code, but it was, denote, it was decoded. And when it was decoded, Rabbi Scott, and we can get into the exact message and how it was decoded and all of that, but the bottom line, I'm getting to the bottom line point, the name of the Messiah that he left in this decoded message was in Hebrew, Yehoshua, or Yeshua, Yeshua. In other words, we would say it in English, Jesus. Right. That rocked the Orthodox Jewish world. It shook them to the core. It rocked the Christian world. It rocked the Messianic Jewish world. Uh, because this venerated rabbi, deeply Orthodox, deeply rabbinical, to proclaim that Messiah was Yeshua, was unthinkable. Uh, Rabbi Scott, as you know, that would be like you declaring to your congregation that you had a vision and the real Messiah was Muhammad. I right. mean, you know, it, it would I wouldn't have a congregation after that. But <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. But I, mean, but I mean, let's say you passed away and right. left that in a note. I mean, what would be the impact of that? What if Billy Graham passed away and left a note saying that the Messiah was Muhammad? I, I mean, it, 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 was just, it was just incredible. So not only in 2007 did this revelation come out. And, of course, the Kaduri family and his ministry enclave immediately went into denial mode and began to, the note was pulled off the website. And right, I remember that. Yeah, they began to declare, no, this is a hoax, this is a trick. Uh, and uh, so, so, so it's been shrouded in controversy and mystery for all of these eight years. The world has waited for Sharon to either recover or to pass. Eight years and seven days it took him. Uh, he finally passes, but... A huge part of this prophecy was that when Sharon passes, you know, uh, Messiah will come. Messiah will not come before Sharon passes. So now it, it says, does it say not come, or, or he said he, the, that the Messiah will be revealed? Yes, yes. Revealed, I think one place he says come, but, but basically the same thing. That he will, he will appear, I think was another word used. But yes, there, there was this understanding that 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 boom sometime after Sharon dies the world would see uh, Messiah right. and and you know Kaduri proclaimed Messiah's name is Yeshua now one thing I was found really interesting we got about a minute left in the segment so then we'll continue on the next one but one thing I found very interesting in the book you actually mentioned that Rebbe Schneerson of course many in the ultra orthodox community believed that he was Messiah although he never proclaimed yeah. to be uh, but he actually prayed or a blessing over this rabbi and he said that you will see the messiah before you die we we kind of brings us back to uh the scripture with uh the great uh you know picture of uh you know simeon being in the uh there and seeing messiah and saying i can now you know die you know the, the prophecy has been fulfilled so we we see here that the rabbi that many claim to quote be the the Messiah, although we know he is not, um, actually said that he would actually see the Messiah before he passed, and he had this vision 
uh, like you said, that, and he said this on Yom Kippur in front of a packed full of house uh, in this yep. synagogue. We're going to talk more about this after the break. You're listening to the Messianic Hour. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Messianic Hour. I'm your host, Rabbi Scott. With me today is a very special guest. We're already setting him up for next week because we're not going to get through this. It'll be a great show. He is the author, Pastor Carl Gallups, the author of the book, I, The Rabbi Who Found Messiah. It's a fascinating book. I encourage you go to Amazon.com. Go to uh, Letter of Messianic Jewish Resources. You can order the book right there online. Uh, this is a must-read it talks about a rabbi, an Orthodox uh, Kabbalah, the Jewish mysticism rabbi, who has a vision of Messiah, and he reveals the name, the identity of the Messiah, one year after his death in a letter. This letter has shocked the world, but one of the promises, one of the things he did at the Yom Kippur service where he prophesied about this and shared with a packed full house of his congregants about the vision that he'd seen the Messiah, the promise was the Messiah would not appear or be revealed until after Prime Minister Sharon's death. When this was written, both were alive and well. Literally within three weeks, one was uh, suffered a stroke and was in a coma for eight years, just passed away this week, and the rabbi passed away just weeks later at the age between 108 and 116 years old. And we were talking about just before the break, Carl, that Rabbi Schneerson actually prayed, uh, said that you would actually see Messiah. So this is not something that was just taken lightly. Yes, no, it wasn't. As a matter of fact, and my book points this out in chronologues and journals, this, and my book is written in journalistic fashion from an obje- objective standpoint. It's not preachy. I'm not his PR agent. I'm just telling the story right. that the media, by the way, has covered up. The Jewish media has shut it down. But not only did Rabbi Schneerson say this, when Kaduri was in his probably 90s, back in the late 90s, 1990s. But in his early years, between the ages of 13 and 16, growing up in Iraq, there was a famed and revered rabbi who was into Kabbalah, and, 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 and Kaduri kind of studied at his feet. This rabbi pronounced over the young man back then. Right. He said, listen, uh, God has revealed to me that you're going to see the Messiah. You're going to live to see the Messiah. You, you will have a, 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 an encounter with, with the Messiah. And God will use you. So, so he had a couple of these prophecies pronounced over him in his life. Yeah, and it's really interesting because you know, I know there's people out there going, but you know, why would Messiah choose a not only a uh, Jewish rabbi, but one that's into Jewish mysticism? You know, yeah. to reveal himself. And you know, you brought out great in the book. To be honest, I what was my first thought? You know, read, starting to read into it, and, and it's true though. You know, what, look at Rabbi Shaul. The, you know, the Apostle Paul was just like this in, in many sense. You know, a, a traditional rabbi, someone who had, you know, was not perfect, and God revealed it and really gave us a great light. And it was very, I mean, he is, like you said, uh, almost, you know, a half, you know, 250,000 plus people came for his, you know, funeral. Uh, Israel shut down. This is a major event. Why is it, though, that we're not hearing a lot about this now? I mean, we just had a major event. Uh, Sharon passes away, but yet the Jewish community has gone quiet with this prophecy. What oh, was yeah. their, what's their main stance on it? Well, listen, I think there's two big factors at work here. The Jewish community has gone quiet, and so has the mainstream media, and there are two big reasons. The Jewish community has gone quiet because the impact of it is unthinkable. As I said, it would be the same as if Billy Graham declared that Mohammed was the Messiah. I mean, uh, I mean, he was kind of the Billy Graham of the Orthodox Jews, if you will. Right. This guy was just insanely popular. So, of course, they're going to bury it, shut it down, because it goes against the grain of everything that they teach and believe. As you know, Rabbi Scott, uh, the name of Jesus is anathema among the Orthodox Jews. Right. The New Testament documents Christianity itself. So, of course, they would shut it down, and I understand that. I thoroughly understand that. That was the same reaction of the first century when Jesus uh, rose from the grave and, and Rabbi Saul, you know, <laughs> was converted. I mean, that was the same reaction. The Orthodox Jews dogged him till his death for decades. But the second thing, the mainstream media has closed it down because it's too unthinkable for them that this revered rabbi 
uh, this kind of a uh, mystical uh, uh, figure from from uh, across the ocean, you know, over uh, over in Israel and Jerusalem. He declares, of all things, one of the most hated names, sadly, in America now. He declares, you know, the name of the real Messiah is Jesus. Oh my gosh! Well, the mainstream media doesn't want to talk about that either. Right. So yeah, there's been an attempt to close it down, but you see. In writing this book, and then, of course, WND Films made a movie about the book, a documentary movie. Now there's a book and a movie. It's sweeping the world. It's going crazy. It has opened the story back up. God is using it. People are being saved. Uh, the message is going. Rabbi Kaduri's story is getting out. The media can't shut it down. They can't stop it. And if we are living in the last days, if these are the prophetic times that you and I believe they are, then why would God not do something like this? Right. I mean, why would he not pick the most insanely popular rabbi in all of Jewish history since the beginning of Israel to declare to the Jews one more time, Jesus is Messiah? And, you know, and you bring up a great point because you know there has to be a radical move amongst the Orthodox. I've always said this, that is going to literally shock the world because if you can get Orthodox Jews to say, yes, he's Messiah, the secular Jews... Are, are much easier, obviously, because here's a group that's looked at it. You know, I, I remember when Schneerson died, and they said, "Don't bury him." He's, you know, they actually thought he was Messiah. Here, you know, we have a rabbi who's saying, "Look, I've seen Messiah, and it's Yeshua." I mean, he spells it out. The controversy comes up. We'll probably talk about that more in the next show. But w the initial response: Who first put it out on their website? Because you know, the family, uh, we hear say, oh, it was a forgery. You heard all these different the, these different topics. But yet he, pr he said before he passed that uh, this is how he was going to do it. Yes, and that's my question to, to the detractors is, okay, well, let's pretend like this is a forgery. Where's the real note? Right. And, by the way, how did that forgery get on his website? I mean, who has access to his website? And, by the way, why did you guys leave it up there until it was finally decoded? and you saw that the name was Jesus. I mean, that's the only time it was taken down. So there are just too many little... And besides that, Rabbi Scott, my book documents, and the movie has video footage of students from Kaduri's Yeshiva, rabbinical training school, as you know, right. who testify, and these are not 20-year-old kids, these are 40, 50, 60-year-old men, testifying that for years before he left the death note, he was teaching in his Yeshiva. Right. That the name of Messiah was Yeshua. And, and several of these guys gave their lives to Christ as Lord as a result of Kaduri's teaching. Amazing. I think the note was his, and I think he left it because he knew it would have a huge impact upon the world. I think he told them, wait a year, because it created a, a curiosity, and when, the, when it was finally open, you know, the whole religious world was listening, and he had their attention. Right. Because just think of it, Rabbi Scott, what if he had just proclaimed it in his, uh, in his yeshiva, and then he went to his pulpit in his synagogue and proclaimed it well it would have shocked everybody but he would have just been considered a senile old man and you know he would have died a few weeks later the media would have shut it down his congregation would have been embarrassed they would have shut it down and we would have never heard this story right. but by putting it in a note and keeping the world hanging on for a year and when it was open and posted on his website and then when it was decoded it shocked and amazed the world. And here we are eight years later, and not only are we still talking about it, but since it was connected to the death of Ariel Sharon, we'll be talking about this all this year at least, and maybe longer if the Lord tarries. And that's really what the amazing thing is, that here he says, he, he ties it to a very specific person and says nothing's going to happen until this person passes. You know, right. like you said, within days after that, we see him uh, suffer a stroke, and, you know, it goes into a coma. We have the rabbi then passing away a few days after that. It, it, it's just amazing to see how these pieces of the puzzle start to go in place. And then eight years, I mean, eight years have now passed. He's in a coma. And then all of a sudden, his body takes a turn for the worse. And yeah. we are now, you know, mourning his death of the prime minister. But that's really this, the beginning of the story. I really want to encourage our listening audience, those who are watching on YouTube and Vimeo, you need to go get this book. Amazon.com, uh, the Messianic uh, Jewish Resources um, letter has it. It's called The Rabbi Who Found Messiah. Check this out. Great book. It is a must-read. You can also get the video. 
I want to encourage you to go to our website, rabbiscott.com. Remember, you can join us in Israel June 9th through the 19th. We can find the uh, place where this rabbi was buried. And join us on our great trip to Israel. Go to our website for more information. Remember, we are a listener-supported show. Your donations are greatly appreciated as we continue to share the good news of our Messiah around the world as rabbis are now proclaiming the good news. We're going to have Carl back on for next week, so you want to stay tuned for part two. And until next week, this is Rabbi Scott and Judy saying shalom and pray for the peace of Jerusalem.